Yo, so I got two uh, 20 heating elements here. Now, yeah, two 120 volt heating elements. This is one of the ones that I overvolted last time. And of course, it's 120 volt and rather than 240 volt. I pulled twice the current, so they, um, they pulled 20 amps instead of 10 amps. So you know, about two there, wide and parallel. 40 amps, that'll be a good ballast. What's that, about 9.6 kilowatt. And that heater is 10 amps, 2.4 kilowatt. Let's give this a try with that, um, for this mod. Yeah, that'd be a hell of a nice ballast. 40 amps to play with. It's not going to get hot enough to do any melting though, so we'll see how it goes more after um, modified the wiring a bit, so it doesn't touch, but I don't think it's going to get that hot. I'm not going to be running it for long, so let's see how it works. Obviously resistive, not inductive, but we'll just give it a test. Let's see if this works or not. That's better. Ooh. Ooh, 20 amps. Switch off. My bloody clip there touching the fire. Well, that's not good. Plug safety first. Bloody thing touched the fire. Yeah, in an extra varnish hole. That would have tripped the RCD if there was. There you go, try again. Yeah, not even that warm either. Yeah, 40 amps is perfect for this. Yeah, see? It did too, because it arced the primary. That led, led it to, um, through the arc and the current went to earth. And that tripped the RCD. Yeah, my bloody alligator clip's too inadequate, so let's go reset the RCD, we'll try some more arcs. Yeah, that's a pretty um, a a adequate ballast. 40 amps for a little lady that might have pulled 40 amps before. So that's pretty much bloody spot on what I need. Try again. is the, um, the uh, magnetic bloody um, flux safety first, the uh, magnetism of the flux in that bloody transfer, I pulled that clip into the primary. The um, clip is not very well secured to that mic, that little uh, tab. It's not designed to be tapped off like that and played around with, obviously. Other, other, this other one I got, which I'll try next, is made very well. That can have a bit of stress put on that um, second the uh, high voltage tab and not break off. This one's only just stuck on, not by much though, so go after a reinforce that. We'll put the other mod on, try the bigger mod. I put a heap of wood varnish in that try and secure it. Yeah, an arc through there, just zap there and that's it. Put some more wood varnish on that one. It's not even that warm either. Perfect. It's good ballast. Big up MIT. The face of that one a bit away from the um, primary connections. Be a bit safe. This should get me in better results. It's a bigger mop. Stays. Alright, plug this one to get this one in a test. This one this should be good. Safety first. I secure that power point to the wall, I think, so I can unplug it easier. Feel for heat. 
Yeah, barely warm. Beautiful. It's worked quite well, the ballast. Huh, only just warm. Perfect. That's a good ballast. Um, let's get that electric motor out. I do a careful check and take the disconnect the earth. And when you do that sort of thing, never touch it. But it's dangerous. This is just gonna be a, a quick test to see where this motor has failed. Yeah, it was a motor used to work, but now it's um start chipping the RC. I'll get it out and show you. Okay. Don't know what this motor, but I very rarely use it. Now it just randomly chips the RCD for some reason. It has, it has been re around before too. Got good earth, I got it active. This is where I'm going to get a mega and meter. That's my next investment, get a good mega. And that'll test for the um, 1000 volts between the active to earth. If there's any breakdown in insulation, it'll go off telling me that this thing's got an earth leakage. This might pick out the fault because it's not applying the voltage to break down the insulation. Neutral? No, nothing. Yeah, only when I apply power to it, it will chip. So it probably tells me the winding somewhere over time has vibrated the insulation and it's just rubbed through and so ever so slightly letting mains into the um, chassis, which is a chip in the RCD. So I'm going to do a very careful experiment, disconnect the earth and ballast it and see what happens. And put a multimeter on the ground, on the motor, and the ground outside or the mains earth and we'll see if there's any leakage that way. Okay, I've got one side connected to mains earth and the other side's going to the motor, to the multimeter. If there's leakage it'll pick up through the body of the motor and the multimeter will measure it then between that and earth. Anyway, I'm going to do it without having a, um, a mega. So let's see if there's any leakage here. I'm going to touch anything. Very dangerous. Never touch anything that's not earth. Very dangerous. We've got 143 volts to earth. So we're leaking 144.7 volts to earth. Whether that's running or starting. And 2.6 volts, yeah. But definitely got an earth leakage fault with that motor. It's Googled. Unplug safety first. That pulls about 30 amps to start this motor. Now, if I put a load between that and the earth, it's obviously going to trip the RCD because there's more than uh, 30 milliamps going to the earth that will trip. With a multimeter, there's nothing. Yep, there they are. They've got some earth leakage. No, it's got some earth leakage. It will run, but not safe. Definitely an earth leakage fault in this motor. 146.9 volts to earth. Yeah, it's gone, this one. There we are. That's that. And that's with the 48 ballast. If I took the ballast off, either way, either way, the proves the principle. The motor's definitely gone, leaking the earth, no longer safe to use. It's a shame because those old GMF motors are no longer um, GMF no longer in business. They used to make the best power tools, that company. GMF depths. Hammer off the tripod here, or the unplug safety first. Yeah, GMF bets, new city made in Sydney. British standards 170 and 1962. So it's a 1960s era, this one, when it was made. 425 in the high speed winding, 950 in the low speed winding. The high speed winding is dead short. As soon as I wire it up, bang, trip. So it's gone. Single phase, 50 socks per second, 5 amps on high, 3 amps on low, run speed, 240 volts, 1.75 horsepower I think that says, 
Class A insulation, continuous rating. Yeah. Used to make the best stuff in this company. Their, their bench grinders are good. Since this thing's Googled, I'm going to pull it apart, wire straight to the run riding and ballast, see if we can spin a coke can in it. But I'm pretty sure that trick only works with squirrel cage motors. But we'll try it, see what this does. Might have been stick some windings around the bloody stator and see if that does nothing. Probably not, because you've got all this in the way to shorter the, uh, the flux, the magnetic um, field. We'll see what happens, eh? As you can see, the windings, they're all solidly painted red. And that's the aftermarket um, varnish I put on there when they rewind these motors. So normally, it's clear varnish when you see copper if it's some um, original windings. But since this has been to an electric motor shop and rewound, really it's got this aftermarket red colour, all solid red colour on the stator and everything. So this thing's been rewound really sometime in the past. Nowadays it's no longer worth rewinding, but there would be a transformer oil motor. Which is bull crap, because uh, it's cheaper to buy a whole new unit than it is to rewind and repair something these days, which is bullshit. Anyway, let's uh, pull this thing apart. Obviously I need to start winding, because the centrifugal switch isn't going to work when I put a uh, uh, rotor out. I'll try and wire straight to the run winding, wire ballast and see if we can get any um, results. This thing has a weak start winding anyway. These older motors never had capacitors. Just the start winding, pure lip of water to kick to get these things um, going. But for some reason, as they get older, the start winding just gets old and it doesn't provide much of a kick. Now I think while it does that, the resistance of the windings must change. And it just doesn't want to... It just growls and starts slowly and slowly and slowly, and then spins up. So. I think that's just the resistance of the copper windings change over the years. Why there's um that's why this one failed. It just wouldn't start under load. On its own it would start, but as soon as I put a bit of load or I held it with my hand like that, it would not start. Just weak. So yeah, that's one of the things I can put it down to the resistance in the um, copper windings changed. And it's just uh, stopped kick starting itself. The switches are alright, I've checked that, contacts are really clean. I'll keep the switch there. The rest is just the pure little winding themselves. They've just, yeah, changed resistance over the years. Anyway, let's pull it apart and rewire this thing. <coughs> I might just hold that down like that. And that's under its start winding there. Stationary start, bang, centrifugal, fl centrifugal switch flicks out on its run winding. Simple as that. Yeah, a Derwent brand. Same as a font, there's a pencil company, English pencil company, interesting. That's the Clickson, or the thermal cut out there. Definitely a keeper. Those things are worth keeping. You see, the contacts themselves are pretty good on this. That was definitely not the culprit while it was weak starting. It's definitely the resistance in those windings are gone. The thicker ones are the start, and the thinner, oh, well, pretty much both the same here. But normally the thicker windings are the start windings, and the thinner ones are the run. You can see this red colour. That's the um, aftermarket varnish or paint that the electric motor rewind shops put on here. So definitely been rewound really sometime in the past. Exactly where it's actually uh, insulation's failed, I do not know. I need a mega meter. Be in here somewhere. The windings have rubbed together. The, the uh, 50 hertz of vibrations of the two wires would have rubbed together somewhere, created a short against one another, and that's what's caused it to. Uh, fail at one speed and trip the RCD. So one's obviously gone to earth somewhere in there. I don't know where, but it's pretty well insulated. It looks pretty good. But somewhere in here, it's going to earth. I don't know where, but it's EO rolled itself. So when that's out, whoops, as that spins, there's weights on the end here, fling outwards. That pops down and it's on the run winding. That's the mechanical part of the centrifugal switch. A bit sticky, to tell you the truth. But I did lubricate that. Did everything I could to get the um, contacts clean, lubricate that, and still weak starting. Definitely in the windings. So I'll hold that down. On the start and run. So I'll put something in there. 
to hold it until it's unwinding and energise of unwinding. We'll see what happens. We'll put something in there. It's not touching anything earthed. So this is a dangerous experiment when it's not earth. Isolate your equipment and do not touch. It's dangerous. So safety first here. Let's turn it on. For once to turn. Alright. We've got some magnetism there. Unplug safety first. Yeah, not even warm. Now I push those contacts down. Until it's run winding. Let's see what happens. Run windings connected. Give me a good reveal of that thing actually, that's out. That's pushing out and down. That might actually be at start winding. Pushes in and it's run. So these top contacts are it's run winding. Let's complete the circuit between those. That's down, so I've got those pressed down on the contacts in the bottom. So that's that's actually at start winding now. The first attempt was it's run winding. This is a start winding. So this would be might get a bit warm. to that. Oh, strong magnetic field in there. Unplug safety first. Fill for heat. Yeah, that one's a bit warmer. Yeah, that's the start winding there. Need something to centre that. Try and get it to spin if I can. I can't just go hold it on my hand because it's not earth, it's not earth, so that's dangerous. So I'm going to have to try a coke can. Partially crushed coke can from my capacitor bank experiment. Aluminium, see? something non-magnetic as a bearing for that can to spin on. Unplug safety first. Can got a little bit warm in the process. This holds up. Contact cleaner can. Center it. it. Actually, you need something like in this rotor here. You can see there, there's something to twist against. The field needs something to twist against in there, so you can see that can's not adequate. I might rip the fan off that, get all the obstacles off so the windings don't get damaged, then we'll give this a spin. Before I do that though, I want to try one more thing. Okay, let's give this a try. Let's get this done not, but it's worth a shot. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But, if I get my multimeter out. That. Let's see what voltage we can get out of this thing, if anything at all. Point zero four eight volts AC. Yeah, we've got something at least. Unplug safety first. Obviously, when that's not suspended completely on its bearings, that just sat in there and stuck to the side. Obviously, it didn't work, because so that wasn't very exciting. Tried some other things, coke can, bearing it up. It does spin a little bit, but it takes a bit to uh, get it to go. That didn't really do much. If I had a um, brush motor armature, I could stick it in there, and it'd be a crude sort of transformer. There it is, I'll unplug safety first. That's getting a bit warm there. 20 amp ballast. I wish I had a um, cheaper energy or provider of electricity was really cheap. I could do this all day, but I can't. Anyway. If I had a really long necked CRT that it really did not give a crap about, I could stick the neck through there, 
needs to be replaced with the friction coil. You can see the actual magnetic field on the screen. So that could be replaced with that. But it's too big and bulky. It won't work, it's going to break the tube before I get down there and try and uh, they might even sort out the um, gun drive circuitry. Got right, some iron filings. Look at that. You can see there. The field there. There we are. There's a field there, so you've got the ends of the windings. Interesting stuff, isn't it? Put on 20 amps um, plug safety first. I think I just spotted something. I think I found a point of failure. Have a close look at that. Um, plug safety first. Ah, there it is. A black spot. I'm going to shot a light in there because see where it shorted out. Oh, hot there. Oh yeah, she got a bit warm. Right in there, you can see a bit of fresh copper. Right there is a point of contact and it shorted out. Right. Now if I can clean that and smash some varnish in that, I can fix it, but eh, not worth it. If it was a half decent motor, I would have did it, but you can see there. The winding shorted out across another winding. And that's the end of it. That's simple as that. AOL. Yeah, it must have been a bit loose or something. The wires rubbed, which was rubbed through and spark are fired, and yeah, that's it. There's our point of failure. There we are. I can dig that out somehow and Normally you could carefully, carefully separate the two points of contact and uh, put a bit of varnish in there, fill it with uh, insulation varnish. And that normally fixes it, but... Oh, I thought they were going to bother. This motor's past it. It's too weak to start a winding on it anyway, so there's no use for it when, it's, when they're like that. It was a good old motor back in its day. Anyway, some good experiments. Hope you all learnt something. Thanks for watching.